and it really seems that, that at the center of all this is, is the shifting winds. Yeah. But, but, you know, I think a lot of people think it's an unforecastable thing, but, but in essence, it is forecastable. Yeah, and in fact, the uh, Phoenix Weather Service Office did a very good job of saying in their morning discussion that this was a re really good possibility that we'd see these downburst winds coming out of thunderstorms that spread out and therefore drive the winds in a lot of different directions and, and cause it to be erratic. How do, you, how do you forecast something like that? How do you know in advance that something like that could happen? There are a lot of different clues, and one of them that they were using on that day is what we call a sounding. So they send up weather balloons every day, and this is a depiction of that uh, all around the country to get these soundings. We're getting a look at the temperature and the dew point profile going up through various levels in the atmosphere and going up fairly high. So that's uh, the, basically the skew T as we call it in a generic sense. And this is an actual skew T diagram. And I know it looks a little complicated, but basically you're going up in elevation right here on the left. So we're starting at the surface, going up to about 5,000 feet and then up to about 10,000 feet. And then here we're getting up into the higher levels of the atmosphere and then temperature is going down as we slope off to the left here. So the important thing to pick up about this is this temperature and dew point profile. See the temperature in the red line right there and here's the dew point right there. And where those lines are close together, that means that the atmosphere is close to saturation. In other words, there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere and that started in the mid levels of the atmosphere. So that is basically where the clouds were going to start growing right there. Now, farther along to the uh, closer to the ground, you can see right in here how the lines really spread apart. And so what that tells us is that it was actually very dry closer to the surface, and that is called an inverted V sounding. That's an indication of that potential for strong downburst winds. And, and in reality, that is what happened. That's exactly what happened, yeah. And we can show you what the, that looks like on a diagram here. So you've got that very dry air in place near the surface, right in here, and then you've got moist air up here. And so with that high cloud base, what happens is rain will fall out of the cloud, but it won't make it all the way to the ground because the air is dry. Remember, it's dry near the surface, so it's evaporating. The rain is evaporating, and evaporation is a cooling process. We know this from stepping out of the shower Hour on a chilly day or stepping out of the pool on a windy day, it cools our skin. That evaporation cools our skin. So by cooling that air, by making it even colder, it becomes denser and it falls even faster, crashes down to the ground. And so when there is a downburst, it becomes a very strong one and then really spreads out very quickly. It has no choice, but when it comes down, it has to go then horizontally. Exactly. And that's what we feel at, at the Earth's surface when we're on the ground. That's what we feel. Exactly right.